Yeah. An example of like an unconscious racist thing might be something like, I just assume that everybody wants straight hair or something, like a very white centric, like you just assume that. And that's kind of like an unconscious racist thing. But when you're like, I'm not gonna hire a mother called Tyrone, sorry, that ain't happening. To call yeah. that like unconscious racial bias feels it's a little bit intense. I don't know, hold on. I'm not saying, I'm not saying. The problem is that you are a racist, okay? Yes. And that's okay. <laughs> this, is, this is the stance you have to take. There are communities in conflict with each other. This could include Black Americans and the police, Indians and Pakistanis, or Israelis and Palestinians, to name a few. Their troubled history can span centuries, and in that time, a lot of hatred builds up. But is it ever justifiable that one community entertains prejudice uh, notions against another? After decades of demonstrated bad behavior by a group, is it understandable that some would feel uncomfortable around them, at the very least? And if so, what are the implications for racial and ethnic uh, relations across the globe? Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> uh, the, the question is exactly what it uh, sounds like. Um, is it ever right um, to be prejudiced to another group? Does that ever make sense? Is it ever understandable? Um, uh, or is that just morally completely wrong and there is no logical reason why a person would do that? So <clears throat> we'll uh, I'll do uh, opening statements for this, then we'll get cracking. Let's go. We can't say that anymore. Uh, uh, Katie, please. Um, so you said, is it right? And then you said it, it's understandable. Uh, of course it is. People um, do dumb, unreasonable, and illogical, immoral stuff all the time. It's not a good idea, it's not helpful, but humans have a, a stupid tendency to like divide into groups and categorize quickly because that's just what we do. Um, it's not good and it's not helpful, but it's absolutely understandable. Like if somebody hurts you, it's very normal to then assume that a lot of people that look like that person might hurt you as well. Uh, it's not very smart though. Okay, uh, Dylan. Yeah, so I guess uh, I'm going to come out here with a crazy take that's somewhat similar to Katie's. By that, I mean it's not radical at all. But, you know, um, I will say that... Uh, <laughs> I will say that uh, some some dynamics between groups can be understandable. And as we know, prejudice against certain groups exists, you know, no matter what. However, when we're talking about whether, on like a, on a moral standpoint, whether it's justifiable... For the most part, it's really not. It's pretty immoral to not judge individuals at the individual level, especially when we're dividing them in immutable characteristic groups, which I think is really problematic. So I will say that it's understandable, but of course, it's not morally correct. Destiny? Uh, yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> uh, is there anybody that's going to disagree with this take i'm so curious who's going to who's going to be the brave one that's like you know what i think actually if some, you have a, bad, a lot of bad experience the group you can be racist towards them uh, mr girl wanna... uh all right you go next then oh i was just saying uh, i was trying to build up anticipation you want me to just do it now yeah go ahead <clears throat> well this uh I guess my my take is that uh, there's an overlap between these two, that it's not just that like we know prejudice is wrong, so we don't have it, or if we know it's wrong, then we won't have it, or then we won't be able to act on it, or acting on it is wrong, but having it is understandable. I feel like there's a, well, it's like a spectrum. So uh, it reminds me of an argument I got in with this uh, black professor, black, uh, I guess black studies professor. Um, where we argued for half an hour about whether it's true that it's safer if you cross the street when you see a black person coming. As opposed to, if there's a white person on one side and a black person on the other side, is it safer, are you safer from likelihood of crime happening to you if you cross the street to go on the same side as a white person? So my argument was statistically, obviously that's true, but it's, it's also immoral to do that. So you have to do this dance of like, how much are you going to allow statistical knowledge of a group's behavior affect how you view one person in that group? And I think that choice between safety and morality is kind of the, uh, the, 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 the conflict that there always is with this topic. Vaughn? <laughs> Surface level... Yes, 
statistically, if you're looking at the statistics and having uh, having no further information either uh, other than statistically, black people are imprisoned and commit more crime than white people in America, right? So, but that adds that is ignoring the entire nuance behind exactly why that is. Because well, if, you, if someone's like gonna mug you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why they're gonna mug. Like when it comes to a, a raw self-protective moment, um, it, it's like it's like birds learning not to eat like certain frogs. It's like that. It's if if it's pure self-protection, which is the hypothetical. Which are you are you safe or doing? It's not which are you more racist doing. You're more racist if you cross the street. But which what keeps you safer? And a lot of times, prejudice and racism. We, we we are still in opening statements. You can respond to her uh, as soon as we're done, right, uh, Miss the Girl? Um, but <clears throat> well, you let her respond to me. But okay, whatever. But no, no, I. I believe you next. were done. Sorry, you, if you, you were, were not finished. Well, your your statement was a response to my statement. Yeah, but. yeah, I know, I know. But this is still opening statements. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Because I know, I know. Yeah. I okay. you totally should have stopped her. I understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> totally should have. Stopped I, could, I completely you. agree. She I completely agree. Him. Okay. That was super out of line. Okay. Okay. Well, I just believe that it, I mean, the reason why my opening statement was skipped because I totally agree with basically the first thing that Kate said was, <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly how I feel. But yes, I, I would also say that building on this circumstance, I would, I would probably cross the road uh if it was dark and at night and if there was a man walking towards i was going to give that example yeah. i was yeah yeah i would probably do that if there were, if there was a woman walking towards me i might not cross the road if there was a man walking towards me i probably would um so there i'm not saying that it is like i wouldn't say like oh then that means that i'm sexist i don't think that crossing the road because you see someone coming at you as a potential threat is necessarily racist uh, but Prime, uh if since, you're since saying this is, uh, continuously a response to what i said am you, i allowed to you, push uh, back? i i promise you you're going to be able to when we get to you when we open it I up i know but why are you letting why is she allowed to respond to me but i'm not allowed to respond sometimes to her, people respond to each other each other in the intros right it's, it's oh, well, fine I, the worry. next time i want to go fucking last <laughs> okay <laughs> no problem great. all right uh, well, then you, when I, he goes I, last i want to respond to him okay great <laughs> well, then, we'll be, then we'll be in a place where we can both respond to each other uh, uh, Bon, are you done yes there's, it's a yeah it's it was an opening statement i was almost done and then i got interrupted so i felt like i needed to start again so <laughs> okay Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let's go uh, to uh, GSU Gambit. Yeah, so um, I'm from a uh, pretty bad area. Um, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with people having prejudice, and I want to explain this more. Um, I, I think the examples that have been given are, I mean, people seem to be afraid to say them, but I don't think they should be. But um so I think that if, like in the hood, we call it street smarts. Um, you have to know where you are and acting on that knowledge of knowing where you are. I don't think there's anything bad about it. For instance, I act differently around police in Atlanta than I do police in my hometown. And that's because um, sometimes these police officers have different ideologies and they aren't actually your friends, right? And they're just trying to imprison black people in some cases, not all police at all, not even most police, but in certain areas, we have to understand the ideologies around us. When I lived in Florida and I was around Trump rallies, I knew that this wasn't a place that I should frequent because of like the, the same amount of data that we would have to support some of the violence that happened in Florida. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with prejudice. I think there is a problem if you never test your prejudice though. So there are certain situations where I've been in where I want to see if my like innate feelings are are going to be realized. And you could say in those cases, I put myself in somewhat a danger. But I think in order to update your internal model, that's smart to do. So there are times where I suspend, suspend my prejudice and I go into otherwise what, what, I, what I would see as risky situations to see how these things play out. And generally speaking, it doesn't play out negatively. I haven't had a chance where I was like testing something and it played out negatively. So I think it's okay to be prejudiced. I think if you're a person that never attempts to 
validate your prejudicial feelings um, against a group, then that's a bit bigoted and that's maybe where it becomes uh, more racist. But um, generally speaking, I don't think there's a problem with prejudice. Okay. Um, why don't we go to Pisco next and do be last. Pisco. Yeah, the, the art of human experience, of making rules, of giving advice, that is, in essence, discrimination. Of course, a balance needs to be struck. That's a fatuous and boring thing to say if one were to say that. The question entailed by this is, what is that balance and what should shape that balance? If you make a rule that says only people of a certain visual acuity uh, are able to drive, you're discriminating against people who can't see as well. If you are casting a part for Scarlett O'Hara and you're only trying to cast from a group of people who are femme presenting, that is discriminatory. The question is on what grounds and in what cases are those kinds of categories acceptable? I think for the most part, categories on the basis of race, for instance, of uh, oftentimes on religion, national origin, um, immigration status, most of the time don't make sense. Um, I would never, for instance, justify a policy of arbitrary detention just because there's a history of a certain group in a, in a given country um, doing terroristic acts, even notwithstanding some statistical proclivity of a given group because the costs associated with doing so are so high. And so in this question, the interesting aspects are not sort of uh, establishing that there is a balance to be struck, but what grounds do we generally consider uh, discrimination to be unacceptable and on what grounds is discrimination acceptable okay. uh, db um okay so i mean i think we can all think of cases where racial prejudice has been used to um build and fuel political movements so pragmatically it might be justifiable a justifiable way to get a politician into office if the political goals we intend to uh reach by getting that politician in office are important enough Right. So th this could be a, a viable avenue. Um, so I don't think it's reasonable to just throw it off the table entirely because we consider it moral. Um, now, um, also, like just on the the Arab and Israeli thing, um, if an Arab Palestinian has spent their entire lives living under like brutal oppression by the Israeli ethno state, which has a law that explicitly outlines that the right of uh, the right to exercise national self determination in Israel is unique to the Jewish people. That is in their law. Is it wrong uh, to harbor racial prejudice toward Israeli Jews? Would, would we tell that Palestinian that that it's wrong to point at that group as a whole and say, "Hey, fuck you for doing this to me"? And when we know that that uh, the vast majority of Jews, I think, say like ninety some percent of Israeli Jews are Zionists and and want this the state to exist in some form, right? Um, and we can pull up stats in New York right now uh, and find that uh, the people who commit around ninety percent of the rapes and murders in that state every year, going back decades, are Black and Hispanic. <laughs> that is just the case. Right, uh, whites and Asians combined account for less than twenty percent of that in, in a given year. Right, um, so can we really fault uh, a white woman on alone in Central Park at night for you know being a little more scared when she sees a black guy walking toward her? And I, I think we can all agree that like um, we should try to avoid prejudice. We should try. We should try to avoid racial animosity. Right. But when we have stats like this, like this 90 percent stat in New York or, or the fact of, of Israelis, uh, is Israel's nation state laws, I think I think it's reasonable and I think it's justifiable for some people um, to protect themselves, to form political movements, to, to build support for an idea. I, I think I think uh, latching on to that, pre that prejudice, being aware of that prejudice and, and, the, and the reasons that prejudice exists. I think that's I think it's totally viable. And I think I think I don't think it's. I, and I don't think we should dismiss it outright because we might think that it's moral. Mm. All right, <clears throat> opening up to the panel. The problem, of course, what Doobie is saying is that he's, I think, suggesting that there's some legitimacy to um, enacting some public policy on behalf of mere statistical um, correlation between a given race and some kind of bad action. Is, is that what you're suggesting? That there's some something, you know, policy-wise that we're able to glean from these from these stats? Um, I mean, in the case of like New York, right? Um, yeah, I think I think um, policy-wise, uh, we could look at the stop and frisk for program, right? Uh, disproportionately, the uh, uh, blacks and Hispanics were checked, but also uh, these people 
are responsible for 90% of the rapes and murders in that state. <laughs> so I think it might make sense to, to check those people more often if you're a cop who's looking for, for people who might be involved in that kind of activity. So suppose that you had the opportunity and you were president of New York, the supreme overlord of New York. Do you think, for instance, it would make sense to have like a lower standard for arrest or for a search of someone merely because of their you know racial background? That would um, make sense. No, I, I don't. I don't think that would. Make Why sense. would it not make sense? But, but I wouldn't. But questions. I wouldn't. But I wouldn't fall to a police officer. Right, but for no, double you checking. just. Wait, hold I'm on. asking I, about policy, I, and I want. I, to I, under, I understand. Why. Well, I think I think there's policy in New York now um, that would say that there can't be any kind of racial prejudice in police searches, right? So if there if there's an indication that a cop is checking a person specifically because they're black, or they're they're double checking this person because they're black or because they're brown, right? Uh, they this cop would get into trouble. I don't think that's that should be the case, given that ninety percent of of this these these sorts of types of crime in New York are, are committed by this group, which is a very small minority within the state. Right. right. So I'll direct you to the question once more, which is. Would you make a lower, on the basis of these statistics, would you make it a lower threshold? If you had control, you know, you could change the law. There's a little thing called the Equal Protection Clause, but suppose you could change it. On the basis of those stats, wouldn't it make sense, using your logic, to lower the threshold for searches and arrests in the state of New York? Yeah. I, and that's, why? that's why I brought up stop and frisk, right? Like I okay. said, yeah. blacks and so You're in favor of such a policy, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Get, it, again, the, 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 the reality is what it is, right? 90% of these, these crimes are committed by blacks and Hispanics in the state. So why, would we, why, would we, why, why would we be checking? For, for why, why should the cops be, be, you know, uh, checking every Asian dude's pockets? <laughs> like, th this so is where answer, the problem is. Answer so, the, we, so we go to where the problem is. Answer the male question. So a lower standard for searches and arrests for men across the board. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so do and the lower standards for young people. Wait, do, Doobie, does this apply to like other demographics too that might be like uh, predisposed to committing more crimes? And if so, like, are there certain metrics we can use for like, say a poor person? Because poor people disproportionately commit more crimes, right? And it just so happens to be the case that a lot of the time that you see these like minority demographics being poor, right? So if I saw a guy driving around a beater like Honda Civic from 1997, would that give me like, would that justify me being able to go and like search his car because, you know, disproportionately poor people commit more crime and he looks poor to me? Well, no, but I mean, this is well, kind of the reason. That Wait, one second. With so this people. is kind of the reason that we, that uh, uh, poor communities tend to have a greater police presence, right? Because that is where the crime is. And we understand that that's where the crime is. So because that's where the crime is and that's where the gangs are, we have more police are patrolling up and down the street and that's why no. they arrest more people in these communities right so, so it's not just it's not just that this specific dude looks poor it's that we know that there's an issue in, the, in these poor communities with crime and gangs and violence and drugs so we go where the problem is i, I don't really so say so we should basically pass policies that say no if you're poor and poor people commit more crime we can't search you on that but if, if you're black who, who commits more crimes we can just you know be suspicious of you because you're black um, I, like I said, I don't think I don't think we should say, "Oh, I'm suspicious of you because you're black." I don't think that's, that should be the case. But if there's an indication that, a cop, stop and frisk that a cop that that a cop specifically uh, selected to to stop and frisk a person because they're black and Hispanic, right? I I, I think that that's why. I mean, you just said you'd be okay just, with a lower threshold for searches and arrests. Why shouldn't that threshold be if I just feel like it? Yeah, not just um, that, but why does that apply to like poor people? I like, just if I you, see someone who looks poor to me. What's I the just told you that, it does. that and a black person. Wait, hold on. I just told you this is currently what we do, right? So uh, maybe it's not specifically outlined that because this area is poor and these people are poor, we're going we're to expect them to be committing more crimes. But we know that this is where the crime is and this is why these communities tend to be quote unquote over policed. Yeah, Wasn't but we're it talking found... about stop and frisk, right? And the basis is not race. The basis there is crime level and it's associated with race, but the basis is not race. It would be an unconstitutional thing for police to say, we have a policy of enforcing laws more strictly, openly against black people. You know, you, it'd be hard to prove that, just so you know. But that's not the basis under which these searches and arrests and increased patrols are happening. And so what you're talking about is a correlation. And, and we're not sort of purposely, or at least the supposed reason, is not to purposely search black people more. Yeah. Um, can hey. I interject? Katie, please. I, I was just about to say this. So when you prompted this topic, Prime, I went and Googled prejudice. And the first thing that came up on Google was like um, preconceived notions without reason, uh, something of the sort. Um, I think when something is a statistical like um, variable, 
that's not having prejudice. If there's a statistical likelihood that men are assaulting women more than women assault women, me having a, it, me being a wary about men, it's not me having a prejudice around men. It's I think reasonable. Prejudice is, I think the prejudice is when you project that awareness of the group onto an individual. So what I was going to say is that, um, that when those statistical occurrences happen or when there are reasonable um, ways to assume something, we, we then extrapolate it to immutable characteristics. So to say that 90% um, of rapists are black and Hispanics in New York is, is a statistical, I assume it's correct, but that doesn't mean things about black or Hispanic people. Like Fawn said that earlier too. Like there are circumstances that lead to these things. The, the statistic is not that way because they're black. It's because there are circumstances but, that drive but, that but, statistic. Mr. Girl, hold on, Mr. Girl's point is that you can't use this statistical data to say the person in front of you may be a person that may rape you. And that's what the prejudice actually does exist. Well, so I would say I you, you can, you can use it to do can't. that. I think you can use it to do that, but I think that you're also doing something a bit immoral. So if somebody gives you a bowl of, of, of Skittles and says, hey, the yellow ones are five times more likely to kill you. Um, but, you know, like you're not going to just take a big handful of them. The first thing you're going to do is sort out all the yellow ones. But that's because they're not people. So if you're doing that to people, then you have to balance it with like, well, uh, how like if black people committed a murder every single day, all of them without fail, then I think we would all agree that it's like, okay, I guess we're going to start over like policing black people more severely, I guess, because the uh, it's a hundred percent. And then I think more racist people are going to say, well, who fucking cares if it's, even if it's slightly more then we should keep an eye on them and follow them around and stop and frisk them. And then more progressive people are going to say, you know what, it might, they, they might commit more crimes. It might be a little more dangerous. But I'm willing to live with that in exchange for equality and freedom because that's what I believe in. So very quickly, I'm going to finish what I was going to say. So um, it's fine that there are statistics, but and what individuals choose to do, if me and Fawn choose to go to the other side of the street because it's night and there's a dude there, that's individual choices. That does not mean that I would support policies that enforce, enforce then like segregating men and women to different side of the streets. So individual choices are not the because same it was as a like policy decision. making. I mean, no. would a hiring decision by a private company, that would be a personal choice too, wouldn't it? No, no, no. You think, can no, I ask no, that no. question? Hold on, hold on. Before, you, before you even get there, uh, Katie, and I see your hand, Fawn. Um, uh, before you, uh, even, and there I see your hand, Doobie and GSU. Um, before you even get there, like those, but those individual choices have consequences, right? Um, so that's kind of where I want to go with this question. Maybe I didn't say a, a word uh, uh, clear enough for you, but like you're saying, well, yeah, it's an individual choice. I go to another side of the street. That one is like less, um, like the consequences of that are, are, are pretty tiny. But like, what about there was that uh, woman um, in Central Park uh, who uh, a black man approached her. Um, because she had her dog um, uh, off a leash, yes. right? Yeah, right? Yeah, and so she I agree the cops, with you, right? And she called the cops, right? And she said, uh, you know, like, uh, he's threatening me, he's trying to kill me, right? That's the other side of that. So that's the prejudice uh, uh, having consequences that's that could have been deadly. He could have died because so of that. So I agree with you. Well, to be clear, that, to be clear. That's a more he, interesting part of that question. But to be right? clear, so, so his behavior made, made what she did, uh, I think, justifiable. Because he, he was acting like a fucking creep. Forget okay, about the individual. Everyone, if you read, if you read his uh, his Facebook post, right? Wait, hold on, wait, 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 we shouldn't get into the, the specifics of the story because we're yeah. sidetracking. Yeah, yeah, just. Yeah, 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 I understand yeah. what you're saying, though, Doobie. That guy was a creep. It was way different than how it's presented, but yeah, but we should agree. Oh, okay. okay. Um. So I agree with you that that's a much more interesting part to like focus on. But we went straight into like policy making, and that was the specific <laughs> point, right? I'm much more interested in talking about the 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 lady at the park than about whether stop and frisk was legitimate because it, it's it wasn't i'm afraid so. it's not limited to, to policy decisions on a governmental level think about racial covenants for instance or the practice of racial discriminatory hiring those are actions that you know could be properly construed as like individual choices but they're still subject to public scrutiny and for us to criticize them and for us to really think about whether it's justified for private sure, and that's a much more a gray area that we can discuss 
thoroughly that is not on the same level as like uh, New York deciding to make an official police policy to stop and frisk. Perhaps it's not, just but, not but, the same. But we, we can't, we can't yeah. like just pretend just because it's a quote it's, individual choice that somehow it's outside the realm of, of scrutiny. Yeah, no, it's and I'm not impact. pretending to do that either. Wait, uh, I think the, uh, that lady in the park and a person in government doing choices that are making choices that are affecting people because they're prejudiced um, are different, but both can be discussed and both have moral implications. I think the reason yeah, why we're yeah. trying to draw a parallel between these two is because it's in, it's kind of inconceivable that you would have a society where we said, okay, everybody is allowed to individually be racist, but we can't have any racist policies. I think that's like the disconnect. So even though they are fundamentally different actions, yeah. if you're selling that on an individual level, it is going to filter through either legislatively or at least to companies, uh, the decision. So that, that is, uh, I get that's then, how that sounds. I thought it was very clear from how I started that I don't think individuals should act in, uh, in racist ways. I force myself to stay on the same side of the street when there's a guy at night because I don't want to act in that way um, because I think it's not fair to the guy, even though I probably should cross the street. So I don't uh, exempt individuals from making shitty, racist or discriminatory choices. Um, but it's also um, you don't fault not the same. So what you don't fault people for racial discriminatory choices. No. She says she I don't. do. Sorry. You, okay, you do fall. Sorry, my bad. Let's go, to, let's go to Fawn um, and uh, GSU. Um, Mr. Coach, do you have any other previous I'm not sure. Um, but let's, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll go to, all right, then. I will go to Fawn, Mr. Girl, uh, GSU, uh, uh, Dylan. I just wanted to quickly point out something that was uh, mentioned in chat a while ago about the, I don't know, I don't know if it has too, no, I think it has had relevance. Uh, there's statistics from the FBI saying that nationally 67% of rapes are committed by white people. So um, the reason why we, we look at these that's yeah, we have to look at the per capita basis. So for instance, let's say that like, let's say that um, like 50% of rapes were committed by one group and there's 10 of those people. And then 50% of rapes were committed by another group and there's 10 million of those people. Well, if there's only like five of those 10 million people committing rapes, but if there's five of the 10 people committing rapes, you're probably going to be more likely to be aware about those five of the 10. So even if the absolute percentage is bigger um, in one group, if the per capita or the relative is smaller, that's usually how people are making decisions. I don't know if that makes okay. sense. Okay, I just wanted to bring attention to that. I, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah, white people are very bad, I understand. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, still destiny. You know that when we're talking about a per capita demographic, right? White people account for the majority of America still. So we just said, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Mr. Girl, I, I'd cross the sheet if you were. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Mr. Girl, go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, I think that you kind of have to make a decision here. I don't think you can be really hands off. We're saying that police have the uh, leeway to decide who to investigate based on how they feel. So, if the police feels that you look suspicious or are doing something suspicious, they can investigate you. And then there's uh, prosecutorial discretion. The DA might feel like dropping your case. The judge might feel like uh, sentencing you. The jury might feel a certain way about you. The, all, the, all of those steps can have prejudice or racism built into them. So it doesn't make too much sense to say, um, you're okay with all of that, but you wouldn't be okay with just putting it in the law and saying, well, we should just investigate black people more. And, and in a way that would just be more honest and direct. And I think if you're not okay with people getting investigated or, or sentenced longer or charged more because they're black, then I do think you kind of have to do something to try to stop that. Of course, that's a ridiculous and ignorant thing to say. Um, we would not be, just because we have discretion someplace in the area of criminal law does not mean that we are tolerant of racist exercises of that discretion. And just because it happens to be the case that um, some of that seeps into our systems with or without conscious um, choice does not mean that we should allow active and flagrant uses of racist policies. And so I, I don't know what you mean, just because racism exists, we must tolerate its most explicit form. No, I think I was saying the opposite of, of what you're saying. Okay, then I'm not understanding. Okay, well, let me explain. If you have cops that are so racist that they are only targeting black people, for example, and rampant uh, people getting locked up for crimes they didn't commit, sentenced for outrageous amounts of time, um, uh, I, I, I think that it makes sense to address that with a policy aimed at preventing that from happening. 
uh, to me, allowing it to happen is the same as enacting a policy that says it should happen. In effect. Oh, I see. So you're you're not in favor of what I'm sorry then. I was conflating you with, with Doobie's position, which yeah, was I'm, so we should I'm a I'm a Jew. So Okay. So you're not I, in favor I, I, of when, yeah. I when the it, it's not it's not the in the start like, locking people up because they feel like it. I, it makes yeah. me uh personally uncomfortable, but also I, I care about uh my black brothers and sisters too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be clear, you would be against Listen. any law sort of institutionalizing or making formal what already happens with respect to um, racism in policies. You'd be yeah. against what do you said against, he was for. I am against laws that say it's okay to over-police black people, as I believe yeah. they are currently over-policed, yes. And you made the art, what I was trying to say, basically. There's, yes. obviously, there's, like, personal responsibility, but we can't institutionalize racist shit. It right. doesn't make so sense. But on so the... I got a question to ask hold everyone on, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, then uh, Dylan. Right. Yeah, so a lot of these things that y'all are talking about are kind of sort of all in a mixed bag and what happens in society. So the reason why I like completely uh, object to what Doobie was saying was because discriminatory policing is how you uh, remain with these stereotypes in place. So I think during Stop and Frisk, somebody quote me on this one wrong, but the percentage of time that they found contraband or violations during Stop and Frisk with... Uh, black people was less. I'm pretty sure that's like empirical. Yeah, real quick, just to factually, to back up what you're saying, so the problem with the stop and frisk stuff and the disproportionate, like lowering the threshold for pulling over like black people or Hispanic people in the past is that as they've done those lower thresholds, the hit rates are, are, are not improving at all. So it seems like even when they engage in discriminatory behavior, the hit rate falls, which would mean that the discriminatory behavior is probably unjustified. Now that's a factual argument that I think is separate from our philosophical discussion, but to, round, to ground it in, in, in reality, the, the discrimination doesn't seem to be helping copying, it doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So, all of these things get mixed together because, um, and it, and I appreciate what Mr. Girl said. The other thing that people don't look at is when we look at these per capita stats. I agree that uh, a lot of them look really bad. Um, but we don't get the stats for things that either didn't go to trial or people that didn't get arrested and all of these things. Like, for instance, when I was in college, I was in the car with one of my white friends. We were completely drunk, and it was late at night. And we got stopped by the police. Luckily, he was driving and I wasn't driving. He was driving and the the cop that stopped us knew his dad was the sheriff. So we completely got off. Right. But if if I would have been driving, I wouldn't have had that luxury. Right. Because that inbuilt prejudice in the system from my in groups. I, I wouldn't get that treatment. So well, maybe if your dad was a sheriff, you might have. But I think that's part of the it's less well, yeah, likely. It is. I think we would have connected in that way. That's what makes it hard to talk about racism is that you well, you'll never know, you'll never know what would have happened if you'd been well, driving we with a bad sheriff or not. We, we, all, all, hold on, hold on. We do yeah. know that I am less likely to be yes. as connected as somebody white as being a part of the outer. Sure, it yes, can't. for sure. I'm yeah. just saying that it, it does. It makes it a little more amorphous um, because you don't you don't know for sure. But I I think that in a way that we, almost makes it worse. We do know that we can look at personal relationships of police officers in lots of communities and say that it's empirically true that black people don't have as many connections to the police in most of the areas, even the areas that black people live in pre predominantly, they don't have more connections to the police than others. That's empirical. Yeah, so can I, can I ask, so, um, so it is true that, that, uh, blacks and Hispanics were disproportionately hit by, by stop and frisk, right. And that the hit rate was lower. Um, I, I think it was like 12%. Um, but I think that uh, given that like crime uh, system is to some uh, extent like driven by poverty and blacks and Hispanics are more likely to live in high poverty areas. Um, if you have a hot spot where you have high, pro high crime, high poverty, um, it's way more likely that the people living there are going to be black and Hispanics. So you're going to get a much higher hit rate with those kind of people. Right. But um, that doesn't really take into account the uh cool down effect right so if you have a hot spot and they know that the cops are coming around checking everybody's pe uh, everybody's pockets for guns for drugs whatever the fuck right a lot of people are going to stop carrying that shit around because right? they don't want to get they don't want to get randomly stopped by the cops and go to go to jail for it right and this is why uh i think we can look at the stats and show that there was a, a reduction in crime rate in a lot of these areas right that benefited these communities so it's not so, so stop and frisk was not like just 
bad across the board. Yeah, uh, more Black and Hispanic people were, were stopped. That's because they live in the high crime areas that need to stop and frisk. But what's bad is the explicit racial targeting of people on the basis of their race. And we, that's something you said that you are in support of. You're okay with lowering the standard uh, for searches and arrests on people just because they're Black. You said that explicitly. And so when you have, okay, maybe it's as an incidence of searching in poor areas, you get more yeah. Black people, more more um, Hispanic Let's, people. But you said that explicitly it's okay if that basis and judgment is made solely on the basis of race. Wait, hold on. I think you're... you're you also like, said you shouldn't do that with poor people when you talk to Dylan. I think you're intentionally misunderstanding what I said. Hold on, hold on. I just want to correct a very false statement because I don't like when people make false statements. There is no indication that stop and frisk reduce crime overall it only reduced crime in situations where there was probable cause when it was just based off the people being black or whatever the uh the additional use of stop and frisk almost made no difference uh, the, the additional use of stop and frisk almost made no difference the stops only had a detectable impact on crime when the stops were based on probable cause and these kinds of stops were very rare um so, and yeah, of course, it, probable cause you wouldn't mm, need a lower threshold for that anyway. It's exactly, exactly. That's let's, the point. That's let's the go point. to uh, Blay. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess what we're all talking about here is kind of the next part I wanted to ask everyone here about, which is how do we feel about the implicit nature of discrimination and how it affects society, right? Because there are certain things we cannot prove, like whether someone was actively being discriminatory against someone else or not, right? So, like, I think on an individual level, and I guess this is my quick take, right, is on an individual level, what Kate and Fawn were saying about crossing the street, when you have to make that kind of individual utility calculation for your own safety at night, uh, something like being mildly prejudiced might be, you know, helpful. But I think with the laws we have that are anti-discrimination, you know, like the Civil Rights Act, things like that, those things help prevent discrimination. However, what we're talking about here is kind of the interplay between... Uh, personal implicit biases and legal biases as well, which is why I wanted to hear kind of chat or everyone here's take on this, you know, because I, I feel yes. like that's more of the pressing issue. So I think one of the easy examples of this is the black sounding name, right? I think there's a large experiment that was done on whether people with black sounding names got less callbacks, even for the same qualifications and stuff. And it was overwhelmingly that uh, black sounding names is the easiest way to not get called back. In an interview so that's a place and i think destiny brought this up earlier but or maybe it was Pisco, but that's a place where those implicit biases personal choices can have systemic impacts even though it, in the act that's one individual but across the broader society it can be it can be impactful to but the whole are generation. we saying they're they're implicit biases like most people unless they're complete assholes are not being racist on person you can make a lot of shitty, racist, discriminatory choices because you have implicit biases um, driving you to those behaviors. Most people that toss out a resume, I, I'm not going to say most people. I assume a significant amount of people that toss out a resume that has a, a black sounding name do not think, oh, a black guy. I don't want that. You know, it's just because they're, they're it's like... a black sounding name. They Wait. attribute a lot of negative qualities to it. And then they look at two similar resumes and they determine the white sounding name to just be a better candidate. That's, that's what implicit point. biases wait, wait. are. So expanding on what Kate point. said. Yeah, okay, wait. So expanding on what Kate said, though, I think it's important to note that if we're looking at two resumes side by side, we have a small, small sample group to look at here, right? How would we be able to determine whether someone's being racist or not, you know, based on other variables and factors, right? So someone might go into an interview and this person might just gel more like properly with the boss. You know, they might have similar personalities, whether whether or not that's related to individual individual experiences. Right. Well, just so, that you have two white guys. It's really, 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 really hard. Nobody right, exactly, is saying that's that, what I'm saying. Right. Wait, but nobody is saying that we're going to be able to look at each individual individual interaction to determine if there was some prejudice or racism at play. But what we can do is collect data across all of these interactions and see if there's systemic bias. That's my right. point. Right, so okay. my broader point is how do we find a solution for those problems if these individual case-by-case -case bases we can't push too hard on, but we can't be too lenient on because there might be some racism going on, there might not be some racism going on. How do we I, actually um... solve the problem pragmatically? We're talking so, about policy. I obviously thought the good way to start was with something like 
again, the Civil Rights Act, non-discriminatory policies, right? But how do we expand on it from there? Kate, I, I heard you wanted to get in there. You get in there. Thank you. Uh, Gambit, I'm sorry if I misunderstood you. When you said choices, I assume con like a choice is usually something that I perceive as something a person actively choose to do. When someone is being discriminatory and it's an unconscious bias, they're not actively choosing to do it. Okay, can um, I, can I so clarify something? That was you? like the... Can I, can I ask you something? Sure. Something? Okay, are you saying that if I am the boss and I, I see the black name on the resume, if I throw it out because I've noticed that most of the black people I've talked to lately are not good candidates and I just want the best candidate, that's not a conscious act of racism. But if I'm like, black people are fine I disagree candidate, with you. Well, I'm asking you, I'm just asking you this. Okay, so you, so if, you, cause you said if I'm, you said it's not an intentional act of racism if I have some pragmatic reason for doing it. No, 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 that's not what I said. I said okay. that as far as I understand um, unconscious biases, you hear the black sounding name and then all of the prejudice about black people so, come in, making that candidate less desirable okay, in so your eyes get, without so you I think, labeling. Me, I, I think what I don't like about your argument know, is the implication that, that people don't like black people for no reason. I think that like it's not, it's not so like, so like waiting tables, a less loaded example. Black people tend to not tip very well on average. And so, and so even, even black servers at the place I worked, everybody, we, and I started out very idealistic. And after maybe a couple months, it was like, everybody was fighting, like, please don't sit them in my section. I was, uh, the black people were much, the black servers were much more forward about this saying like, I don't want these fucking black people. Uh, and then everybody else had to just, you know, kind of like, it's very uncomfortable, but money right. is money. However, it is also racist to do that, but it's not racist. Like my preconceived conceptions about black people are affecting me, making me not think that they're going to tip me less. They're actually going to tip me less. So what do we do about that? What do you, but what do you do? That's not if the they same as the resume, yeah, yeah, the, like Mr. research. Mr. Girl, Mr. Girl, Mr. Girl, that's very, very disanalogous because we're talking yeah, about it's money, not the same which is like a dependent factor on people's survival, right? If we're talking about well, you're saying, okay, so it's, it's somebody, no, 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 it's somebody no, no, no. like I, I, me who started yeah, yeah, out yeah. saying like, yeah, I'll hire, I'll hire anybody. Yeah, I'll talk to anybody. And then you, you block out an hour for this interview and this interview and this interview. And, and after enough interviews, you're like, Jesus Christ. It's like the black people are three or four times more likely to be unqualified for this job for some reason. Reason. And like I, you know, I don't want to be a bad person, but this the, is costing me time. The research about the the Mr. resume Girl, thing is that? sorry. So in, in in a hypothetical, at, at what point is it? Wait. So we need to talk about something that's like obviously more analogous here, right? Let's kind of remove the monetary factor from the equation. Well, I just use the I just use your analogy as the analogy. Wait. No, you just wait. You gave me um, like an example which is heavily reliant on people's okay, need say for survival. I have, say I start no, out. Let, I, let me off your. Let me offer you an analogy that's more analogous. Okay, so you're a you supervisor. Said hiring wait, 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 black people. For wait, wait. Okay, so say okay. you're a supervisor at a McDonald's, right? Yes. You are in charge of hiring practices. However, you do not own this McDonald's. The monetary factor is not so much at stake for you here. And you're just well, making a hiring out of my decision. Day and my boss is like, why right, are, right, why, okay, why, you're why are you interviewing white people, right? You're why can't we take this hypo based on the same level? Why can't we take this? Well, your hypo was, what if it's costing you money and you don't have the resources to just, uh, you know, to do every interview? Is that it your costs question? Money to be non-racist. It costs the answer is, to be yeah. non-racist. The answer when you're is, it's too bad. When you make policy, some people will suffer and, and, and that's the cost of our policies. Um, it, it could be the case that you would, I don't know, it would be more efficient if you discriminate on the basis of religion when you're doing uh, stops in the airport. It could be oh, that wait, case. I'm, not I'm sorry. That's, that's not that's like a, wait, I wanted to get in why my Insane. analogy is more analogous, right? Because I, my broader point- Why not I've answer his? Home, I challenge you monetary? to answer my analogy. I challenge you. Because I don't no, like you, the stop and frisk example. It. I don't I like that we can say like, hey guys, we found one example of a time racism didn't work and was like a bad idea. A lot of the times racism actually is pretty practical. It, it does your make analogy it, it talks about what i was talking about there is a lot of research when they just give a person that is in a hiring process two resumes that are basically identical and they just change the name on it 
That is the research. That is the that data is that I'm on, talking that, about. Okay, wait, let's, okay, hold, let's, let's, wait, wait, hold on. Let's re, 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 okay, let's think about the interesting questions, okay? If racism is enacted and it doesn't achieve a good end, obviously every single person here says the racism is bad. That's such a boring, let's ignore that, right? The more interesting question, because this is what we grapple with on a daily basis, is it seems like there are times in our lives where people act in a way that's racist or is discriminatory towards some other characteristic that we would like to not be, but it seems like there might not just be a reason for it, but even some level of justification. For instance, if you go out and you're at a bar and you're with a stranger and a woman offers you a drink, you might look at that a bit different than if a man offers you a drink. There might be some utility there to the discrimination. Sure. Or also, let's say that you are a server in a restaurant and anybody that says otherwise has never worked in a restaurant before, okay, and can fuck off back to whatever you came from, okay? If you are a server in a restaurant, it is, especially Sunday mornings, it is the case that people have the impression of and probably is the case that black people don't tip as well as other people. Now, if that is the case and there's some form of racism that you can enact, and it seems like there might even be a benefit to it, do you tell people, hey, even if you might have a heuristic that's serving you and is actually statistically providing you with good outcomes, should you act against that? That's the interesting question. Yes. Okay? And that's and what I'm you should, bringing up. You should answer this question. I'm... And the answer is that the, you're not factoring in the utility or the benefit of having equality writ large and equality under the law or equality in people's perceptions. And that is a very, very positive thing about our country. You know, uh, imagine that you had some policy or that you knew that Republicans tip less or you knew that Republicans were more prone to crime than Democrats. Would you ever think that it's conceivable to have a policy where, you know, we always uh, we always search Republicans more than Democrats, that would seem to sort of counteract our notion of equality for First Amendment purposes. And certainly in the racial cases and in the sort of religion yeah, cases. That, and I think you say in the societal level, the problem is society moves in like chunks, right? You've got like people, no, then but, policies, then companies. But the problem is we're asking the people to change potentially before the society does, even though that might not serve the individual. On a grander political experiment, I agree with you. Of course, it's better if we all move in ways, all of us should coincide um, both politically, ethically, legally, judicially, everywhere with all of what our moral values are. But there are going to be times in these like certain in, in these different parts of society where some groups of people are going to be disadvantaged by doing so and can sure. tell those that, that's, people to act that's, the, that's the i question. mean that's any policy and so destiny why don't you can answer I mr answer? girl's question a answer mr girl's question destiny no, like, like watching is, you guys battle over if, this is fun. if you had a store owner who mm -hmm. is uh he cannot uh process all these applications in a fair way it's just impossible and you have uh, if you if you don't racial discriminate and only look over the white people's applications, you go out of business. Do you say it's okay for him to discriminate in that case? I think that, um, I agree right now with US on the books that if you are an employer or if you are a um, landlord, uh, like a building owner or something, then I think that you have a special onus on you not to engage in discrimination against certain protected classes, one of those being race. So I would say that, no, you shouldn't be allowed to participate in the labor market as, a, as an employer if you're going to engage in discriminatory practices because that Thank type you. of stuff will roll downhill in the worst way possible. Because as soon as one business owner says, I can only hire Asians for my uh, data crunching firm, otherwise I'm going out of business, well, everybody's gonna be like, wait, oh, hold on. Well, fucking, I'm only hiring Asians. And then pretty soon those are the only yeah, people and, getting hired or, but, or you know, any industry, so I think I agree with that. There's a compulsion there for sure. This I, is, hold, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is why what Pisco said was important. He's trying to show y'all that when you say that it's not in law but it's personal decision, effectively they can cause the same like injurious outcomes, and that's what he's trying to get y'all to understand. And I would think that we would all say that even if we thought there was some utility to racism we be against using it. This is why okay, no. this this yes. is why there's applications of black people that have even better qualifications, but they still receive less callbacks because of this topic right here. I think, wait, okay, can I, wait, 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 really quick, really quickly, please. So, um, so would we say that if someone were to like, uh, let's have had a, a sushi restaurant and they wanted the sushi restaurant to have like an authentic atmosphere, right? So they were specifically looking for Asians to staff the sushi restaurant because they didn't that's want people racist. to come in. No, that's if, race, Asians correlate hi very highly with being Asian. So that's not yes, fair. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but if, but if it's uh, nearly a black 100%. or a white person, but if a black or a white person were, were to, to uh, apply and they have the, all the, the skills needed to make the sushi and you turned them away because they wouldn't fit the aesthetic of your restaurant, could we say that that's racist? That's racial discrimination that would be unjustified? I would. In that case, yeah. there's a, there's yeah. a, so it would be yeah. the same thing if you're talking about like a, a movie that's hiring a particular role. Um, or if it's like Hooters and you're only hiring women as opposed to men, uh, even though there's differences in kind of like our legal standards for the discrimination, what will pass muster and what will not. Uh, I think in certain cases, in certain cases, 
you can find cases where it makes sense. Okay, if we're going to have someone play Barack Obama, we're not going to look at all of like, I don't know, the Asian candidates. Um, and so you can you can certainly find situations where that it, that kind of artistic choice or aesthetic choice. So we just choice. call them, we'd call them uh, actors or a cast rather than employees. Right? Is what yeah, you're so I, if I, I, if I wanted a restaurant yeah. with, with uh, blonde girls There's or big certain... girls staff in my restaurant, right? I would, black girls tend not to have blonde hair and big, and uh, well, maybe they have big boobs. They tend not to have blonde hair. Right. What so are you I, I would just, I would about? just, I would just get rid of all, all the black actors, right? And only, yeah, and it will only interview the interview black the white girls. girls. Tend not to have big. Boobs. I, I stopped myself. I'm sorry, but just That's, a really, a real been a little quick point. So far, but a real quick, a real quick point crazy. on the, on, on the names thing, right? Um, if you look at the the names that they use for this study, right? I think I think it's really interesting to to kind of break them down because they chose names like like Latisha, Lashonda, uh, T Tawanda, right? Names that I think a lot of people. Uh, maybe unjustifiably, would associate with lower class lifestyles, right? Kind of ghetto names, right? And they put those up against Amy, uh, Hannah, uh, fucking um, uh, Lori, right? Misty, right? So, so I think there could be. It could be that this was a, a class discrimination. Wait, so wait, hold on, wait, real quick before we spend any because time we're, we're really quick, wait, really on. quick. No, it's, no, I'm not. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Because you're, if, if if they were to put names like Cletus, Jim, Bob, Billy Ray on there, I'm sure you'd find people making the same assumptions about these people based on the application that they came from a certain uh, class that might not be good for your for your restaurant, for your business, whatever the fuck. Right? You'd assume that they're like trailer trailer trash types. Okay, before, before we get too far off into that thing, okay, so th that's the racism, though. That's the problem, is we're essentially saying that, like, well, there are a lot of black names, and they're associated with being lower class, so maybe it's just a class issue. Well, no, that's a race issue, right? That's like saying every time I see a black person, I don't want to deal with them. You're like, why not? Well, it's not because I'm racist, it's just because I think all black people are poor, so it's a class thing. That, that, that's yeah. not how that works. Right? No, but wouldn't right. we make it's, a lot of assumptions yeah, exactly. based, uh, hold on, wouldn't we make assumptions uh, about, like, white people, for example, from, like, white names that we consider to be lower class? Cletus, uh, I, no, 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 Chad, because there's Jim a whole Bob, bunch of trailer Billy trash. Ray, like, yada, yada. No, okay. Like, first of all, even people in trailer parks are named Billy Ray, generally, okay, right? You'll find a lot of people that have, like, <laughs> relatively normal, like, like, th like, there's a whole bunch of white trash names that just sound like normal white people names, where people aren't going to see okay. it immediately and be like, you know, oh, well, that's just a white person. I yeah, think but there are a lot of them. No, 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 they are racist no, trailer trash. I have to no, say that. I'm going to freak out if I don't say it. Okay, all right. I'm going to freak Katie, then Mr. Girl. Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. I, I'll i start dancing if you won't let me talk. Okay, I would love to that's, answer that's, that's uh, that works for me. <laughs> Destiny's question. I think um, that, and I don't mean this on an institutionalized level. So I think when, when we keep going back to, okay, you're saying no racist policies, but individuals like can still act in ways that would result in the same outcomes, even if you don't have the racist policies. I still see a clear benefit of like a country or an organization or whatever not have racist policies on their book right so that is always going to be a no for me no matter what in terms of the individual level um your question destiny was like when and how should the line be drawn on that and i think that when prime gave the example of like me and Fawn crossing to the other side of the street versus the woman who called um, police on the black guy in Central Park. I think where the line is drawn is how detrimental it is to the person that you're applying the prejudice on or the bias against. Mm. So when, when I cross to the other side of the street, that might hurt a guy's feelings that I'm scared of him. But I think overall, if I get raped, it's probably worse for me. So I'm going to take that one. Um, yeah. If if it's putting him, if if someone is like, if you cross the street, I'm gonna shoot that guy, then uh, I'm I'm gonna not, you know. So I think it depends on that. I don't think I don't think that makes sense. I don't think you can compare your fear of what you're imagining this person's gonna do to you to what you're actually doing to them. Like I could say, okay, I cross the street whenever I see a black person because yeah, that might hurt their feelings, but if they cut my head off and like put it in the back of their car, that's gonna be worse for me. Like it, you can't just you can't compare rape, which you, you get what I'm saying. Okay, then can no, you scrap that rape. part and just address the main point that I said, if you want? Uh, yes. I, I'll retract uh, all of that. Never mind. No rape. No. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, another no thing rape. is about that example that is interesting is that I've I've done Never. these calculations and the safety the safety the safety change in crossing the street to walk by a woman instead of a man is about the same 
safety of a uh, violent crime ratio of crossing the street to walk by a white person instead of a black person. Okay, the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is, is because racism is bad. Racism is bad, but we can't determine why people do what they do. Um, so we can sit here and talk about how we need to mind read so to tell people not to be racist, but I'm like, that's not going to happen. So what we can do is not have racist policies on the book and then make societal changes that reduce unconscious prejudices in people so people will actively be less racist, whether they choose to be or whether they unconsciously are. That I is my I, solution. I think that's a good idea. I, do, I disagree about the part... You're welcome. I disagree about the part where we can't tell people not to be racist, though. I said I'm a messaging guy. I never guy. said that. Well, you can't tell people not to be racist. You just said exactly that. But but let help. me let me explain my response. I think that the way we tell people not to be racist is very pedantic and insulting and unempathetic. And I think that people will respond much more to, um, you know, people like Doobie. They're going to respond better to saying, hey, not Twitch chat, uh, saying <laughs> yeah, like you're <laughs> you're um, it's understandable that you want to throw out these these uh, uh, black name resumes, like given your experience or, or waiting tables. It's understandable that you don't want to, the black people to sit in your section. Um, and I get how that affects you financially and emotionally and psychologically rather than you're a racist, ignorant you know, white trash piece of shit. How the fuck could you say this? I hate you. I, I agree I with you. That, Discourse right. should be completely changed if we want better results. But, in um, order but to I never do that, said that to... being racist is, is shouldn't be called out, right? I'm just saying no, 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 you I can't that, discern you said... people's intents, so I'm not you... going to bother with that. I think you said that you can't talk people out of being racist. Yeah, I think that's did. what you implied. I never said that, and no, I, I don't think that's true. Do you think you can um, talk people out of being racist? I think you can talk some people out of uh, reducing their conscious racist choices and biases. You think I you think that everyone are a little bit racist. Do you think you can meaningfully talk people out of being racist on a, on a mass scale? If they are racist in a conscious way, then yeah. But I think everyone are unconsciously a bit racist about something. Right. So uh, one I'm question I wanted us to get at about earlier, though, is something I really thought was important to address with one of the questions I was trying to get at was what do we do about the unconscious racism, right? Because that still has implications in our society today when it comes to hiring practices and things like that. How do we actually what, what, make a meaningful As I said, you make so much You guys say this shit. I think y'all are granting way too much. And it's almost ridiculous to me. Me too. When y'all are, are giving way too much credence to this concept of unconscious bias. When people are committing these actions, they understand what's happening. It's a pure cope to act like they don't understand what they're doing. Oh, I'm just tossing the resume away. I don't even really understand what's happening in my head. I, it just, it left my desk and went into the trash. No, these people absolutely understand the decisions. And that's why I said choices earlier. And you took some problem with that, but these people understand the choices that they're making. To try Who and- Who are these like, people? Is these all people? Wait, I didn't yeah. say it was all people. I'm yeah. talking about the people that make the choice to discard black resumes just because they're black resumes. I thought but, that was but some of them implicit. don't make that decision because of the black. They do end up making the decision to toss the resume out. But the point with unconscious biases is that they lead you to racist results. But the justification in your head are not, I just hate black people. I, I well, think some we, are what, conscious I mean, and some are unconscious. I think, unconscious. Yeah, I think what Gambit is saying is that like an example of like an unconscious racist thing might be something like, I just assume that everybody wants straight hair or something like a very white centric, like you just assume that. And that's kind of like an unconscious racist thing. But when you're like, I'm not gonna hire a motherfucker called Tyrone. Sorry, that ain't happening. To call yeah. that like unconscious racial bias feels it's a little right. bit infantilizing. No, I don't know, hold on. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you didn't, chill. I'm just saying don't that like- Okay, then don't correct me when I'm not incorrect, okay? <laughs> oh boy. All I'm saying is that, what, what Gambit is saying is, it seems like we have this huge classification of like accidental racism when most racism is, is a little bit more overt than that. That's, I think that's what Gambit is yes. getting at. Okay, but, sure. but is that is that always a bad thing? Right? So like, yes. uh, oh someone, the example <laughs> someone used oh earlier, the example doobie, someone used earlier. Doobie, doobie. Right, so, so if I if I were a woman uh, walking in Central Park, right, and this black dude is, is has this creepy fucking black dude is, ha is hassling me about my dog, right, and trying to call my dog over to him, and I know 
uh, that that ninety percent of the rapes and murders in in New York City are committed by black are, are by black and brown people. Is it wrong for me to to have have some kind of extra fear that I wouldn't have if there was an Asian dude doing it or a white dude? Doing it's not it? wrong to I have don't, a I don't fear, think but so. you also you also include the information that he's creepy. So yeah, you made that, you had. I don't think it it matters if. What his skin color is, what he looks like, if he's creepy. Okay, well then, yeah. then, then is it wrong for that guy. Same, oh, Hold on, so, so, so would it be wrong? wrong um, it's a normal a creepy guy. Is, oh, so, so, I think, so I think I think Katie yeah, said earlier. I don't, I don't think we care what their color is. Oh, I just think we care about their skin color. I get it. We got it. Please, no, wait, really quickly, really quick. Um, so Katie said earlier that she like intentionally forces herself to stay on the same road as like a, a dude by coming toward her, just to, so she doesn't seem like you know racist or whatever the fuck. No, right. not um, that I don't seem racist. To not enact racism. Sure. <laughs> Um, but but There's if a, if a woman who was more concerned with her safety, let's say she she uh, she was aware of these stats, didn't even want to risk the situation, right? Could we really fault her for it going to the other side of the street? Like no, if she, she actually hurt anybody? I don't, I don't think, think that we have to. It doesn't have to be a binary of whether we're her faulting safety. her or not. It is understandable oh and also immoral. And, and so if she crosses the street, I agree with we can Mr. Kyle. With that. We can understand the practicality of that, and we can also be upset that that it's racist. And if is it immoral to, to put on your seatbelt when you get so, in the car? To, to take an extra step to protect yourself? Oh, it doesn't hurt a black person's really fucking feelings when you put on your seatbelt. It's same. pretty similar. No. It's, 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 it's actually similar. not similar if because you your seatbelt isn't a person. If the seatbelt isn't a person and a black person is. That's the difference. If you, uh, me, is, is this unfair? I know we don't like labeling people stuff, but you are explicitly in favor of racist policies and racist attitudes. Why aren't you a racist? That's Wait, untrue. Who? So uh, I'm not I'm not in favor. I don't believe that any racial group is superior or inferior. What I'm saying is that given the stats as they currently are, right? Um, I think I think some of these policies might be justifiable, right? I'm not saying that black uh, people are like inferior or that they're, they're more. You, you agree that the wait, stats they are the way they are because second, of factors outside of the race. I think what he's asking, what he's asking is instead of I'm not saying I'm not saying. Oh God, you're Mr. Here's the problem. One second. One second. I can tell you the problem. I can help you. I'm You don't need help. I don't need help. I love you. I love you. You're beautiful. You know that you're beautiful, but I don't need your help. Okay, please. Let him help you. What I'm saying. You need my help. You need a PR guy. One second. Okay. I'm gonna be our guy, and I'm gonna take your case. I, I would love that, actually. Um, I'm okay, you. really quickly. Let, let me, no, 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 stop, no, stop. Right, 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 no. I said, do please, me. please, do me, please, please. Oh, okay, okay, please. Okay, so what I'm saying. Right, is I'm I'm not saying that that uh the, these stats are the way they are because these groups of people are genetically predisposed to behave this way. There are obviously socioeconomic uh, circumstances that have led to things being the way they are. And until we address those circumstances, this is the reality people are living in. So given that this is the reality, I don't I think it's totally understandable, justifiable, and not not immoral. They could be totally uh, morally in line with someone's belief systems to, to take themselves out of a potentially dangerous situation. I think it's totally fine. And if Would we can understand, racist? wait, no, wait, no, no, I wouldn't. If if we, I, I, call, I, call it, I call it prejudice, right. but not racist. And if we can understand, we can understand, if we can understand why a black person, why a black person in the United States would, oh, would feel some kind of way about being pulled over by the police or interacting with the police officer, given the, the stories that they see about police brutality and, and cops planting evidence and racism and all this kind of shit. The stories we can understand, they see. If we can understand that that feeling leading to them uh, making generalizations and having a prejudiced feelings toward every kind of every cop they fucking see, I think we can understand uh, why a white woman well, walking around in the park the would, would have job. the same kind of feelings about, about a black dude or, or a Hispanic dude in the park. So it's prejudice on the basis of race, but not racism. Is that correct? No, it's not prejudice on the basis of race. You said it was prejudice right? based, right. On, based on the, the, the reality of the doobie, crime doobie, stats doobie, as they doobie. exist. Doobie, you're digging a hole deeper for yourself, doobie, my friend. you got to let me get I, you out I of this. I am on top Trust of the hole of this daring is what you guys I do. <laughs> this is what I do. Listen. Okay. The Jack problem is... going to get you in more trouble now. The problem is that you are racist. Okay, and that's okay. This is, this is the stance you have to take. You just have to say <laughs> if you guys are defining racism as make as unempathetically making practical decisions that hurt people of color because it's the most and you know logical thing to do at any given time, and I'm waiting. Um, my own safety and comfort over the feelings of oppressed people. If you're going to say that's racism, then yeah, I guess I am racist. That's all you but have it's to not say. Logical. And, and instead of getting instead of it is logical. His logic is sound. The only the only reason his it's not, logic isn't sound. No, it is his absolutely. Logic is, listen, um, let me let me like, let me finish. Not very intelligent. Hold on, let me see. He he he. he, he 
he told us a lot when he compared avoiding black people to buckling your seatbelt. So you, so <laughs> whether whether or not <laughs> yeah. um, the, the he's statistical a difference, whether or not the statistic, yes, I know, but I want to unpack what that means. Whether True. and I have an I have like an emotional scuba mask that I can swim down into this, and I'm gonna find a little gold nugget and bring it back to you. What Please, he's saying, I need help with that. I am. I'm so gonna, I got it. I, I've got just, it. I, just let him do it's it. Not, it's it's not it's not about intelligence. It's just a strong stomach. Listen. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, when you compare a seatbelt to a black person, even if it's the same ratio as safety to danger, what you're leaving out in the seatbelt analogy is that the seatbelt isn't a person, doesn't have feelings, doesn't deserve an equal and free society the way a black person does. And so in Doobie's um, moral scale, he just doesn't weight that very high. And he weights it low enough that we are all in the panel willing to call him racist. And Doobie, what you're doing is you're engaging in a semantics debate and it makes you look bad because it makes you it makes it seem like you don't understand what racism is because you, you are racist and yet you think racism is bad and don't want to be called racist. So I think I would strongly advise you to just say, if you're saying that my practicality here is hitting the threshold of racism, then yeah, I guess I'm racist, but I don't want you to think that black people are genetically inferior. I just think that the situation is what it is, and we should just uh, let it play out that way. I don't like the end of that distillation because that implies that somehow we have an idiosyncratic definition of racism. Our definition um, of racism we, in this we context do have an, we do have an idiosyncratic not definition right of here as applied. I mean, within but, within within this panel and on Twitch and among progressives, we don't at all. But in the greater world, most people think, well, if I'm not calling somebody the N word and like throwing rocks at them, then I'm not racist. So I don't know what the fuck. I'm you sorry, guys are talking about. this is just nonsense. I mean, do you think it's idiosyncratic to believe? that segregation is racism idiosyncratic by definition means unusual and if you poll people across the globe in every different country and ask them if they share your definition of racism they will say no i'm talking so about I, americans I, in america who would i think all agree i don't I don't know that i think there's a big debate right now about what the definition of should racism we include is. animals in our in our definition of who conceives what is as racism i mean how broad are we going to go with this level of generality uh, i'm assuming that most americans think that explicitly I, race -based I, don't policies, including, I don't think including animals as a so what's wrong with thing, limited as, America? As a fake thing that i'm saying i'm mentioning animals makes sense when i'm saying within the twitch panel it seems that eight of us have a shared definition of racism. One of us has a different definition of racism. I think we can just acknowledge that. We don't have to talk about it for a fucking hour. Ours is not I think that his, I think Ours Jesus Christ, Doobie, his. fucking, you're freaking me out. I think that Doobie's definition of racism- Do the time pretty, thing again. I think Doobie's definition of racism is pretty common among Americans. You may have a different sense of that. I think it's better to just be bilingual. I understand Doobie's definition. I understand your definition. I like your definition. It's even my definition. That doesn't mean we don't have, we, we don't, we don't. How do you know do you understand his comment or the majority? I mean, are you just pulling this out of your ass? Yes. Well, my, okay. my definition of, my definition of racism yeah. is what you'd find if you looked up the word racism in the dictionary, I think. Um, but really quickly, uh, so but Mr. Girl, the most common Mr. Girl, I, I need to correct, panel. I need to correct a couple of things. Well, the most common Wait. definition on this, on this panel is incorrect then. So, um, well, no, you said, you said in my, you said, you said in my, you said, wait, no, 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 wait, wait. You said that I was, uh, that, Seatbelts were not black people. Black people in that, that situation wouldn't be the seatbelt. Walking across the street would be the seatbelt. Uh, a, a bad comfort, a bad situation with a black person would be like a no car one's accident. feelings are hurt. Right? So, so I'm explaining there, right? What I'm saying there is getting raped or murdered by a black person in that that analogy that I that I, that I came up with. When you um, buckle your that I came up with, for your safety, was it, you're making it worse. When you buckle your seatbelt, what I'm saying is that going across the street is is the is the equivalent of putting on your seatbelt. Now, uh, an actual the bad part street, of crossing the street. Just in case that, something bad happens. That, so the bad crazy. part of crossing That's the street. Wait, really is quickly, that you, please. I, I'd like to. I'd like to just finish my statement. But you've already oh, derailed. Oh, let, let no, I haven't derailed. Let I haven't finished. Derailed. Let him finish. Maybe. I think. Oh God. I think, I think that we can all. And Mr. Gray, I think you said this earlier, right? That we can all uh, understand when a minority uh, in, the, in the United States feels a certain way about interacting with the police, uh, thinks that the, the police officer might be racist toward them, might beat them up, might might plan evidence, yada, yada, whatever the fuck, right? Um, even though if we look at the actual stats uh, on those issues, it's a very, very small percentage of police interactions where any of that takes place. 
Very, how do you know? How do you know that? I, I, I get where you're going. Can I respond now? Yeah. If you, you, you want to, if you want to, if you want to say that, that there might be, this might be happening. We just don't know about it. Well, go go to your I fucking can concisely explain you know why you're wrong. Come back to me. But the numbers that I that I have access to. What numbers right? are those? Are, the numbers like don't matter. Than, your analogy doesn't make less than a percent. It literally doesn't matter. I'm not done speaking. I'm not done speaking. I know, but please, please let me finish. Please let me finish. Hey, hey, hey. We all we all talk at once. Literally, no one can hear you. So it's it's pointless. Really pointless. Doobie, finish what you're trying to say. Then can Thank I get you. in prime? Um, uh, I want to respond. I want to respond. He's 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 impugning my analogy, and I want to respond. You yeah. impugn my analogy oh, first. It was oh my, my analogy. It, it'll be very <laughs> short. It'll be the shortest hey, thing listen, you've listen, ever. Listen, listen, Shut up. Wait, listen, please, please. So what I'm saying is that we we can understand black people feeling a certain way about interacting with police, and not just black people, but any minority person in this country interact with. Uh -huh. police. We can understand it's like the prejudiced notions they'd have about that police officer. I think we could we we should extend that same level of empathy toward a woman who walks across the street when she sees a black dude walking toward her and she's by herself. Right? I, I I think I I don't understand why, Mister Gray, your whole thing is about having empathy for people, but you can't extend this empathy to that I woman. Can't. I'm extending. Who might want to take an extra you. step. I, and I, I don't I don't I don't need it. her right now. Who might want to take that extra step? Oh, but you do to protect herself and just cross the fucking street. She's not I hurting understand. anybody by doing okay. that. Okay, that's that's that is that last and part. and one no one more last like thing one more last thing i think i think uh, dylan keeps asking you know what should we do to address this right well we should find ways to, to make sure that 90 percent of the rapes and murders in new york city aren't committed by black and brown people i think if that's not being the case people wouldn't have these these prejudices or have these stereotypes in their head okay wait can i can i suggest something can we, oh, can, we get, can we get a can we get a definition of racism for the panel yeah that's exactly what i was gonna do wait we're that's like exactly what i was gonna do can okay, i can i, can I respond no. prime we're on eight different respond? levels of conversation right now wait, I, I, need, I, need I need to, to get first. in here i just need to get in here no, because i need to address what i need to address exactly what destiny he said there I think oh. it's important that Doobie brought up the fact that there was a dictionary definition of racism and that somehow his was it against the grace of Jaw Almighty, okay? <laughs> so when we look at the definition of racism, right, it's prejudice, discrimination, and or antagonism directed against a people or a person or people based on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized. So the policies that we're talking about here and the ones that Doobie seems fitting to enact are definitionally racist. Doobie, what you are yes. trying to do here is make a case as for why racism is not bad, I guess. But that is exactly what it sounded like Mr. Girl was saying, and I'm going to roll with that. However, I think it's important that you understand that, yes, by definition, what you are trying to enact is racist. Thank God. Okay, oh so you're in, you're okay. You, you took the Oxford Maybe. definition. I, Oxford sucks. Okay, I go with Merriam-Webster because oh God. I'm American. Oh, oh stop! stop. Merriam-Webster definition. Stop. You would look this, this up. Just, it is a belief that race is a fundamental different determinant of human traits and capacities, right. and that racial uh, differences produce an inherent superiority right, of a particular race. I'm not making any superiority claims. I'm not a white person. If I were to right. do that. Right, I'd probably say that. that Wait, okay, hold on, most... stop, Doobie. You can't really believe it. If I run around and I scream and I call every black person the N word, but I don't think they're worse than white people. I just call them the N word. Does that mean you're not racist? Because I don't think hey, they're hold Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. There's. Right. Please. You know, well, hold on. You can use this. a racial slur without being racist. I, I call people racial slurs yeah, no, no, right? no, all the fucking point. time. Was... I'm not a racist. Doobie, okay? doobie, doobie, right. doobie, I love everybody. Doobie, doobie, right? please, so yeah, if I went around and call, just... I, if I went around and call black people the N word with a harder all fucking day, that you could, you could, you could take from that. You can make the inference, uh, the inference that I'm a racist, but I don't think it'd be necessary. Is it a racist, racist act? And I, and I think maybe that doing... assumption about me would be kind of, kind of rude to be honest. Doobie, is it a racist act? Analogies are wrong. No, not necessarily. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna give you. Doobie, this is the way. Wait, this is this is on top. This is on top. This is on top. So so if an Arab Palestinian were to call Doobie. Israeli Jews the K word, right? Um, would we what, say that that's a racist? There's a K word. There's a K word. Yeah, there's a K word. No, no, no. There's a K word. I'd say that that could be justified given the fact that they live in under the the oppression of an Israeli ethno state of an Israeli ethno state that outlines specific rights for Jews above Arabs. Yubi. I'm trying to help you, and so if you're trying to get under my skin, oh my god, I I don't care about Israel any more than I care about any other country. I'm here to help you, and I need you to listen to me very carefully. Doobie, the last part of what you said was when you cross the street when a black person is on the other side, you're not hurting anyone, and I implore you to understand that. Most people on this panel, I would say everybody, disagrees with that part. If that were true, 
then what you were saying and the stuff you if and all the analogies you're making would be absolutely perfect. If it didn't hurt black people when you throw their resume in the trash can, then that would be a great plan. If it didn't hurt black people when you flee from them when they enter a park, that would also be really great. However, it does hurt them. It it hurts them uh, pr probably in pretty much every way imaginable when you when you add it all up. But in the moment. It, 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 I mean, it hurts their standing, it hurts their dignity, it hurts their feelings, it hurts them psychologically. It's, it's not good, f uh, trust me, having people be terrified of you and flee whenever you come near them is, it's not, not a good feeling. So I, I think that your um, seatbelt analogy falls apart there. The police analogy, we're not talking about, yes, we can empathize with black people who are afraid of the police. I can empathize with you being afraid of or wary about black people or people of color committing more crimes. I, I'm not saying that that I don't extend you empathy when I advise you to just bite the bullet and say that you're racist by this panel's definition. That's not what I'm saying. However, a police officer does not have, in, in, in this country, we do not say that the police have the right to not have their feelings hurt. That's part of their job. That's why we pay them. Their job is to have a series of unpleasant experiences throughout their day, resulting in the rest of us be safer. Black people have not signed up for that. So it's not a good analogy. And what you should just admit is that the rest of us care about all this other shit I'm talking about more than you do. Um, I, I feel like a... Maybe maybe I'll use another out not not even an analogy oh, well, a comparison. Please please don't. make it make it a little easier if you guys understand. Refrain, refrain you you from make it analogy. Make it make it a, make it a tiny the make it a whole, tiny bit easier. Analogy, yourself, a tiny a tiny bit easier if you guys understand. Okay, where where I'm coming from here? Okay, we understand. So, so we know. Wait, really quickly. Please, no, we understand. We, understand, we know. We, do. Right? we can, we can pull the stats on this. We can pull the stats on this. That the vast majority of people who molest children are not actually pedophiles. Right? They, they're That's just, uh, they're That's sexual opportunities. Okay. That is absolutely you know I think I'm on Doobie's however, side. I think it's back. However, 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 the rest of you, you guys, guys are hey, And we know, we know, we know that, we know, we know that the vast majority of people in this country, I, I think, uh, fuck, I, I'll pull this out in a second, but the vast majority of people Make in this country who, who are, who are pedophiles, <laughs> who are pedophiles, right, don't yeah. actually act on those urges, don't actually molest children. The vast yeah, majority of them. About 10%, so, if I remember So, correctly. yeah. So, um, if a pedo, but but even so, if a pedophile were to come to you, someone who, who you knew was a pedophile had these urges, even if they've never acted on them in their entire fucking lives, they came to you and said, "Hey, uh, you need someone to watch your kid this weekend." Oh, so I'll your your it. analogy is I'll built on it. the idea that I don't right? I, that I don't empathize with pedophiles. Exactly. Well, but you're buddy, not empathizing with I, the pedophiles. Have I got some fucking you're not empathizing bad news with for women. you. You oh, no, just walked into a minefield. <laughs> I, I love the minefield. Okay? You done fucked up. But I'm telling you, if if we can say, if we can say that it's understandable for a parent in that situation to say, hey, no, I can't leave my kid with you because I know you're a pedophile. Even though, you know, vast majority of you guys don't do this, uh, even though the vast majority of people that, that actually molest children are not pedophiles, I'm still not going to yeah. leave my kid with you because I'm making some assumptions based on you being a pedophile. Right? Why can't we ex extend that same empathy because there's that a we would have for the parent in that situation? He's making a prejudice, making a prejudice decision. To the woman who yeah. crosses the street. Wait, oh, wait. All right, so we're going to go to Katie. Uh, we're going uh, to uh, just you. Katie, I, just, Katie, just I can respond to that really quick. <laughs> really quickly. You, really quickly, you, and then Katie. Taking, I like it. You're taking information that you knew about the specific person you're being prejudiced against, whereas in the situation with Black people, you don't know anything specific about that person, and you're applying the same, like, ideology that's the problem I mean, that's a good argument if you knew if someone was no, zero percent sure. offending and was no, 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 he knew the person was he said he specifically said he knew the person was a pedophile yeah but no, someone being on, a pedophile so he's defining a pedophile as, a as 10 10 has like an internal on. urge to do a bad thing and no no my point please okay i hate you so much I'm happy that you brought the pedophile uh, analogy. Me too. Fuck, it's, it's relieving. Um, I, I would I'm, love I'm, to talk about this more. Oh, chinga <laughs> su madre. I can um, breathe now. Okay. <sighs> a pedophile has a psychiatric condition that makes them attracted to prepubescent people. Okay? That is... You can call it inherent, you can call it learned, we can discuss it. That is a trait that they have. The fact that yeah. black people are, <laughs> that certain statistics correlate with people being black is not specific traits that they have. Yeah, but if he's not want, saying the attraction to the child shush, is not the, it's, it's, 
but that's not Shush. the analogy. No, you have to it relate is. it. Okay, to okay, the, okay. The, hold on, hold on, Katie, 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 Katie. The probability Katie. of them actually is hurting yeah. a child. Katie, Katie, please go. Thank that's what you. you have to compare it to. I, I, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So, you are again, you are comparing things like seat belts that are inherently protective of a person during a um, like car crash and being black, which has none of the negative properties that you're assigning to. You're saying being black correlate with A, B, and C. So why doesn't it make sense for me to make uh, decisions based on that? And nobody said women aren't allowed to make the executive choice for themselves in that moment to um, value their own safety and cross to the other side of the street. It is, is not the negative trait there. Shut up. It's, it's child it abuse. It is prejudice, though. And right, as I said rat. before, it is dependent on the harm that it would do to the individual. So when you're comparing inherent negative qualities to being black, that is disanalogous and that is racist as fuck and is no, very not. weird and makes no sense. It's not weird yes. or, or it's literally in, not in analogous analogy, at all. In, in the analogy, pedophilia is not the negative trait, or it's it's the um, it's percentage childish. chance of abusing the child that he's comparing yeah. to the percentage yeah. chance of, of a black person or whatever. I understand, person. and we can talk about pedophilia all you want, but no, no. he made a lot of points before so, that too. So no, no, just no, 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 you should either reject right his analogy. Or follow his actual. He analogy. made like three like analogies. All of them are disanalogous. I'm no, good. No, wait, no, wait. Let me let me help let me help Mr. Girl because I know he wants to jump in to, to defend pedophilia, but this is ridiculous. So the well, problem no, is I'm defending I'm defending I'm defending truth can, and, I can, and I can, logic. I can I can walk I, you through this, Mr. Girl. I mean, let me okay. save you. Let me put on my scuba gear. I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna rescue you. I'm okay, gonna, come okay. on in. So. The individual person in these scenarios, in one yeah. scenario, it's a black person that you're walking across the street to. And you can say that there's some percentage chance racially that this yeah. person could be a individual that would want to rob you or something, right? No, 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 no. You've already, you've already. No, no, uh, I'm going to finish. You're saying there's some percentage chance this person will rob you. Yeah, but obviously we're okay with discriminating on the basis of attraction to children. No. That's an okay basis of discrimination. No, no, not, hold on, hold on. That, that, that is a fine, that is a fine example. That is a fine response. That's a totally, that is a logical response to Doobie's no, no, analogy. I'm, I'm that's, actually that's, gonna yeah. finish. I'm actually oh, okay. gonna finish. Okay, okay but, so yeah. with the guy on the other side of the street, you yeah. have no real reason to think that he's, see, you tried to say that those things are equal, they aren't. You have no reason to believe this person is a person that would do that 10% 10 percent chance you, they're they're if the, the person is black and black let's let's make it really even let's say that every time a black person walks by you on the street there's a 10 per, or say but throughout their lives black people 10 percent are likely to just randomly mug somebody on the street 10 percent of them they just tend to do this so now we have our we have our equivalency set up we don't need to look at real statistics so and the answer uh, is, is obviously 10 percent of pedophiles offend 10 percent of black people mug you while you walk by I mean, so let me help you with this. Oh, one is okay, an okay so help, help me. Hold on, hold on. And the other is not an okay form of discrimination because we're more worried about discrimination against uh, a racial no, minority than even we that. are about discrimination against. No, that's who. No, no. Cool. no. no. Pisco, I'll let you that argue is absolutely that. Absolutely the case. I'll let you argue that next. Oh, oh, yeah. Pisco's argument is the I think the only valid response to this, but I will. I want to hear. I'd like to respond to this at some point. So listen, Miss Girl, in the situation with the pedophile. Yes. We know we in Doobie's example, he knows that this person is of the class that could commit the action. And Would black they, people are of the finish. class that, gonna, that also oh, no. could commit a, a, a let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish camping. So I don't think these things are analogous at all. Like Ow. you don't know they are. No a black person so could mug you and a pedophile could, pedophile could abuse yes, you. It's the same thing, technically. Yes, it is. So, yeah. thank you, Dustin. No, there's, a, there's a difference when you look. So, Doobie's, no, no, no. You're letting I'm, Doobie I'm, fuck with your head because no, it's, you're not letting me finish. No, y'all just keep no, interrupting me. Yeah, with you. Saying, he's comparing oh, black okay. people to pedophiles. Right, so, oh, my Gambit, God. Don't let him interrupt you. Yeah, Gambit, keep going. Okay, okay, so listen. Even if you, so first off, somebody has to be something, somebody that would rob. And then, second off, they have to be willing to rob in that scenario. 
Show so me you're going to let me finish. You're not going to talk right now. You're going to look at me, but you're going to just let me finish. Okay, so it's it, just like the pedophile situation. We wouldn't say you could look at all men and assume they are a pedophile and then assume that that 10% chance, if they were a pedophile, that they would commit this crime. You're making this assumption on the black person. The black person first has to be somebody that would rob you. And then it has to be, are they going to rob you? So there's two levels of this, right? There's a level of will they commit a crime and will they do it now? The same thing is with men and pedophiles. It's, right. is this person a pedophile? And then if they are a pedophile, will they commit this crime? You're taking the second level of this person is a known pedophile and they could commit this action to the broader group of, I don't even know if this person would commit a crime. And you're making we, those two things equivalent. Are you using pedophiles as child molesters? I need, I need to explain this, and I need to explain this to Gambit really quickly. The thing that we're talking about here, though, is non-offending pedophiles, like Mr. Girl was referring to. Yeah, right? I was going to ask. Non-offending pedophiles, like Mr. Girl. Dot. Dot. Yeah. Dot. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. I right. Okay, I, 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 I understand that. Yep, Mr. Girl. Believe me, I'm trying to have your back here. So the difference is knowing that someone's going to commit an action is completely different when you're just taking two corollary statistics okay. like people being attracted to children and then that automatically leading okay. to child you can abuse just versus ask someone Gambit, being Gambit. Black. Can, I, can I respond to Gambit? On, Dylan, the analogy would have to be this is a black person that 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 we have reason to believe will rob you. Because the pedophile, yeah, but, yeah, but, we have reason yeah, but, to believe that they may commit an action. No, but, no, no, Gambit, you don't. Gambit, no, can you I respond don't. to Gambit? I want to respond, Gambit. Can I respond to you? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take it away. If we if we just say correlation and we just say 10% of black people will mug you or mug somebody and 10% of pedophiles will offend, um, the label and the reason they are that way and what they're thinking and what the non-offending pedophiles are thinking for the purpose of pure safety of, of a binary of did the uh, did the act occur or not occur? Were you hurt or harmed by this person or not? Everything else can be ignored. And what Doobie is doing, which I enjoy a little bit of myself, but he's, he's making it very confusing because we've decided that it is okay, as 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 Peace Coast pointed out, we've decided it's okay to ostracize or be super wary of pedophiles because we don't care about hurting no. their feelings as much. Uh, and yeah, also, and, and also, answer. also, let me let me finish. Let me finish. I'll let you and, finish. And, and, you don't let me finish. I'm gonna let you finish, <laughs> then I'll respond. Okay. Face. Uh, that's nice of you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think. The, my, my answer to the analogy is um, that a pedophile, unlike a black, and maybe this is what you're getting at, a pedophile, unlike a black person, can be expected to kind of just absorb that if we say, hey, look, uh, you are probably fantasizing about this kid, so we don't really want you to babysit the kid. And like that might hurt your feelings. You might think you could do a good job of it anyway. And 90% chance you probably could. It's not worth it to us. And so we're, we are going to hurt your feelings. Uh, and, and, and what I would like in the nicest way possible, we're going to say you, you can't you can't be around children. You just can't. Yeah, this and this pedophile might think to it say, is you're, not, you're not allowed to walk down the street next to a white. Uh, you can't walk by a white woman on the street. We, it's just it's an unacceptably harsh, unempathetic stance to take. In, in one and in the other, it's just not. It's, it's you it's, don't it's, discriminate it's on the basis of race, and, but you can discriminate if someone has a tendency to crime. If we were able to know that someone has a twenty percent uh, tendency to crime, not and that's all we knew about them, um, then it would be perfectly okay to discriminate on the basis of just we know they're going to commit a robbery. Just like but the difference is purely emotional. We just don't no, feel I have good a simple about question the basis of your race. Is that is the the condition under which you're okay, so the the correlation strong enough, and it hurts no, but, 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 Hold on, but, but that being a is, is also is also probably an immutable characteristic. No, hold on, this girl was that they have no control over. Yeah. Right, it's but what about whether we're, we're, we're comfortable with it's, 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 it's okay, socially look, acceptable the to, to talk about the ways that you guys want to torture and murder pedophiles at any time that topic comes up? Well, yes, that's, 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 that's a good example. That's a good example. But we the know, way, even though we know that the vast the majority of people also don't wait one second, don't molest children. Do the vast majority of people that do molest children, that do molest children are not pedophiles. Okay, can we Mr. Girl feel about the way the way you feel about black people is how most people feel about pedophiles. They don't care about saying, hey, you can't do this. You're scary. You're going to have to be treated differently. It's not the same. It's not the same. Oh, my God.
God, why are you doing this? Hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on, wait. Mr. Girl, yeah. Mr. Girl. Okay, okay. Yeah. this is what you're doing. Let me make this really simple to you. Okay. All right. You're walking right. down the street late at night, right? Yeah, yeah. There's two people on the street, and one is on the left and one is on the right. Both of them are black, yeah. right? Uh, so let's say, okay. hold on, hold on. So where am I let's gonna go? Had, yeah, let's say you had information that one of them potentially wanted to commit murder. And let's say you had no information on the other guy at all. No, no, hold on, hold on. Which person, which, I'll say, so the person that has contemplated murder before and, and we have reason, suspicion to believe that he may murder one day is on the yeah. left side. And the person that we have no information on is on the right side. Where you're, would you walk? Both of these people are black. I, I would walk on the right side, but that's because Why? you've introduced a new corollary variable into your analogy. So it is, is no longer the original question. It's a new question. What, what's the new corollary variable that I introduced in the situation? Well, if, you of said, if you said one person was a black person who I knew had a 10% chance of mugging me, and the other person is just a random black person, but um, black people on average have a 10% chance of mugging you, which would be the true analogy, then I would say it doesn't matter which side I walk on because I know on average they're going to be the same. Why don't I just ask the question, Mr. Grill, are you okay with discriminating with people on the basis of their pedophilic attraction? I'll just let him escape. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, discrimi so, discrimination being like you can't work at a school? Uh, uh, policies and attitudes like that, yes. Attitudes okay with like that, right? that for the purposes of protecting children, yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay with similar things with respect to race? No. And okay. I want to explain why. Yeah, no, but th that's the fundamental question, whether or not yeah. discrimination is on yeah, the basis. I, I was, I was, it was kind of funny when I said to Doobie, we, we feel about uh, pedophiles the way you feel about black people, but I'm serious. Like, it's, 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 it's just an emotional argument. I mean, we just believe and we feel that it's not fair to do that to somebody based on how they look. It just feels wrong. Wait, and even the percentages clear. might be the same, but in one case we feel it, and in another case we don't. And Doobie, I think that's what you're not getting about this. It is also has to do I, with I do, I do get that. Hold on. So, so to be clear, this is, I'm not I'm not afraid of black people. Right? I don't cross the street when a black people's walking. <laughs> so so I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm also wait, not afraid on, of wait. black people. <laughs> I, I didn't know so, what, so what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm proposing, okay. well, well, you because of, you, guys, you guys, you guys have said that I'm racist. Okay? Well, what I'm proposing, everybody didn't say that is afraid of black people. Is yeah, afraid exactly. Of black people. Yeah. Everyone who didn't speak and, up, and you're and, and, black even if you said you're afraid of Jesus. black, if you're not afraid of black people, if you didn't mention all the other racial groups. You must be afraid of them. Right. So I'm afraid of some of the other ones. I'm sorry, kidding. Okay. Wait. Wait. So, damn Italians. You threw me off. Wait. No, I got it. Okay. So. I'm I'm not saying that I feel this way, right? That I would cross the street, or that I would like, or that I wouldn't. Uh, you you know, would. What I dismiss, said. What I dismiss said. It. Is, wait, wait, no, stop, please. I'd like to. I'd like to just. Racial you, discrimination you does me, not pull at your heart the way it does for the rest of the panel. So that to be finished. I don't want to talk about this anymore. You just don't care as much. You don't have to explain why. No, listen, listen. You're not understanding, right? I I care more than you do. Just I care more than you do. That's the reality, right? What What I'm proposing is that we should have empathy for the woman that that choose to cross the street for for the dude who sees a, a group of black guys coming toward him in an alley and I'm turns and wants to have a fucking way we should have empathy for those person. people and not call them immoral for taking I'm, an extra step based I'm based maybe based on on racial prejudice or to protect black themselves. people doobie why is I'm that for racial hiring, hiring. Why, doobie doobie would you would you offer this if there was evidence that said that black people were somehow correlated with worse employees why wouldn't you be uh why wouldn't you have empathy for someone who refuses to hire black people or would you yeah i think that'd be fun Okay, so then like, that's, like, isn't, I said, isn't I said that earlier. That's racism? fine. I also, I also think we should have empathy for racist people who don't want to hire black people. And Doobie, I yeah. empathize with you and your stances. What I'm pointing out to you, and this is not a value judgment, is that you simply seem to not emotionally understand why oh when God. the rest of us, when the rest, when the rest of us picture a black person walking down the street, and then they see a white woman come toward them, dart across the street. The rest of us get upset thinking about how it feels to be that black person, and you do not care enough about that to understand why we're saying. I do. I do understand. Okay. Well, what but I'm saying feel, is, you, what I'm, but what you I'm saying is that you guys this, don't care. That you guys don't, you seem don't to care. feel strongly about it as the rest of us, right? Not true. 
I, so Wait, what I'm saying what, is that you guys don't seem to clear. care. You're what, okay. Oh my god! Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just finish yeah, the statement. Uh, finish you the guys statement. don't seem to extend that like same level, that same level of care and empathy toward the woman who might be afraid. Okay, let me right? put it this might, way. Let me put it this way. She's afraid. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put we what? have run out of time for this particular topic. Oh, I have one final uh, statement we, I want to say. I have we, one final statement I want to say. You can add that at your intro statement. for the next one. Uh, we're moving on. Um, well, okay. then why? What's we the difference? Add, oh, that, then the, the difference is I said this is how it's going to go. So that's that's okay. the difference. All right. Okay, great. Okay. My intro Thank for you. the next one is going to be my statement on this. Sure. That's <laughs> perfectly fine. All right. Um, 